the chiefs and councils of First Nations in Canada have enormous uh, legal jurisdiction and huge responsibilities. They are responsible for the day-to-day on-reserve administration and, and operation of programs uh, and the legislative powers uh, of any local government, much expanded for First Nations. They're responsible for economic development and the relief of poverty on reserves. But they are also have the legal power and responsibility to protect their constitutional rights of the membership. That is, the constitutional rights are Aboriginal rights, Aboriginal title, and treaty rights. Every part of Canada is covered by the historic constitutional rights of the local First Nation. And those, those powers are uh, extremely potent, that is, they're constitutional, so they override anything that Canada or a province might want to do on the landscape. Um, and they are very potent laws because they involve protection of underlying ecological habitat. So Aboriginal and treaty rights, ra treaty rights roughly uh, in most cases are the right to hunt and fish and trap. And you'd think, well, what does that mean? That means the right to protect such habitat as is necessary in order to maintain a meaningful opportunity to hunt and fish. So that means that there has to be a place where you can actually have a harvestable surplus of the animals or fish that have traditionally been caught. And that means you have to protect large areas of natural landscape. It makes First Nations with uh, treaty rights uh, the most powerful defenders of the environment in Canada. Much more powerful than anything that Canada or a province would have or a territory. Um, in the case of Aboriginal rights, even more so. That is, Aboriginal rights are at least as broad as treaty rights. Usually they are more extensive. Um, and, and although there's been limited application because there has not been much litigation in Canada, whenever those rights have been asserted, they've been found to be very powerful and uh, effective to control excess industrial development that threatens the natural habitat. So, uh, protection of the, uh, and the other huge constitutional right is Aboriginal title, which has uh, only in a few instances been asserted and successfully established, but we know that there's large parts of Canada, especially British Columbia, where Aboriginal title exists. And once it's asserted, will uh, confer actual ownership and control of the landscape uh, on the local First Nation. What used to be called Crown lands will become First Nation lands. So those three uh, prongs of the jurisdiction of a First Nation chief and council uh, get into very complex and controversial uh, legal and jurisdictional areas. But there's no doubt about it that they are the most powerful actors in the landscape. That is, the smallest communities, the little First Nations, have the most potent tools to protect the landscape, exercising their constitutional rights uh, to protect their treaty rights, their Aboriginal rights and their Aboriginal title is the ultimate fallback in terms of protecting the environment in Canada. And that responsibility falls on the shoulders of the chiefs and councils of some of the smallest and uh, in some cases the uh, poorest communities in Canada, but they have that responsibility and they take it very seriously. Thank you.